unfortunately, if you call this from multiple threads, both threads could get to here, say, ah, no one's instantiated this yet. I will do so the next line. And then you've got two singleton instances and goodness knows, you know, depending on how the timing works between the two threads, both of those instances could end up becoming um, getting out in the wild, or maybe only one will, but you've created a second instance sort of ready to be garbage collected and potentially cause problems. So uh, maybe it's worth talking about the threading issue. Um, it comes up a lot with, with mm -hmm. people. They don't, you know, the, people might be sitting here going, big deal. You know, one thread uses one yeah, singleton, uh, uh, so, you know, someone, another thread uses another. What's a thread anyway? I mean, it might be worth talking about deadlock and okay. concurrency and all that stuff. So, uh, so if you're thinking, what is a thread anyway? Um, then read a threading tutorial. I'm not going to go into details. Well, I'm sort of serious. So a thread, it, if you have two threads, you can have two bits of code executing at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's really sort of all you need to think about. If you're familiar with multitasking, that's kind of similar. So threading is difficult. It's difficult to get right. It's very hard to unit test properly. Um, I sort of believe that people go through various stages of their understanding of threading. Mm -hmm. The first stage is complete ignorance, so not being aware that there are threads, um, not doing anything in a thread-safe way, that's fine. And then suddenly they, they're aware of threads to the extent that they will create them, and they will get them wrong, and um, suddenly be aware that things are, are happening at the same time, and uh, they get data races and they notice that something's wrong and they think I must make everything thread safe so they add lock statements or in Java they make every method synchronized and everything locks and suddenly instead of getting data races they get deadlocks uh, which is where one th typically where one thread is holding the first uh, you know, you've got two locks involved where a lock is something that only one thread can hold at a time. And the first thread has lock A and then tries to get hold of th lock B. A second thread has lock B and is trying to get hold of lock A and both threads block, so they will wait until they've got their lock, darn it. But the first thread isn't going to be able to make any progress until the second thread has released its lock and the second thread isn't going to release its lock until it's got hold of the first thread's lock. So that's called a deadlock. Um, there are weird and wonderful ways you can get into it. Um, but you don't even have to have deadlocking for things to go wrong. Locking is slightly expensive. And this the, the code that we've got here, I've explained it's not thread safe because we could end up creating two singleton instances and that you know, immediately in, violates the pattern. So um, stuff that must only happen once. And, you know, I want to throw this out too. A lot of people say, well, I'm not going to worry about threading in, in this code I'm writing. But what a lot of people don't know is that someone could take your stuff and then decide to do some threading work with it. Oh, yeah. So, so what I didn't go on to um, was after getting to the stage where you get deadlocks all over the place because you've synchronized far too wildly, <laughs> you realize that doesn't work either. And then you start being selective and thinking about what should be thread safe and what shouldn't um, and documenting it and working out what you mean by this thread safe phrase as well. Right. Um, for more information, uh, just search for uh, what is this thing you call thread safe, Eric Lippert, and you will find his blog post, which talks about it in, in more detail. Um, the general rule of thumb, which you'll see documented on MSDN all over the place is um, instance methods of classes don't tend to be thread safe. Static methods almost always should be um, because you've got no context there. And obviously, if you've got a class that's specifically designed around concurrency, then that should almost certainly be thread safe even for instance methods. So the way I tend to think about threading is I don't tend to make most classes thread safe for their instance methods. And things that do need to be thread safe, I will typically make them all about the threading. So 
if a class is designed to have a purpose that is to do with concurrency, it will be thread safe. If it isn't to do with concurrency, I will make no attempt to make it thread safe. As a general rule of thumb, um, you'll see in no time, I go away from that all over the place because I try to make lots of immutable types and immutability generally renders things thread safe um, for suitable values of the phrase thread safe. So after going to this sort of selective phase where I still have to think quite hard if I'm going to say whether where something is thread safe or not, um, there is a fifth state, not fourth, whatever, where you just magically get threading right. <laughs> and you don't need to think about it very much. Sort of fall backwards um, into it? <laughs> yeah, you, you just get things right because it's so ingrained that you think about this. Um, and uh, it's possible that there are maybe two, maybe even three people in the world who are like that, mm. um, who just get threading right naturally. For the rest of us, we need to think about it hard all mm -hmm. the time, unfortunately. Um, but actually, by not trying to make things thread safe where they don't have to be, um, you can get away without thinking about it 